When you think of skin cancer, your eyelids probably aren't what comes to mind. But one local surgeon says he is seeing an increase in eyelid cancers, and also it's in the younger patients. Tonight, 8 on your side, Stacy Scheibel shows us the warning signs and offers a few tips on preventing it in the first place. We live in the sunshine state. Even if you're not a sun worshiper, we all get our fair share of exposure to the sun. A lot of water sports, a lot of boating in Florida, we're getting reflection of the sun, even if you aren't wearing sunglasses or a hat. Which is why Tampa ocular surgeon Bill Mack thinks he's seeing an increase in eyelid cancers. Now, the upper eyelid is partially blocked by the brow. So that's why I think the lower eyelid is, is the most common area. In fact, the second most common area would be the inner portion of the eye, the medial canthus. Dr. Mack showed us some examples. One, very obvious. This is actually a melanoma, which, uh, which is you know, quite a bit less common than the basal cell carcinoma. The other, the much more common type of eyelid cancer, is much harder to spot. Particularly on the eyelids, it can be somewhat difficult to see an eyelid cancer developing. It may be along the margin where you can't really see the cancer unless you uh, lower the eyelid. Dr. Mack shared these warning signs. An area that is chronically red or inflamed, crusting or scabbing of the eyelid, and perhaps the biggest red flag, a loss of eyelashes. I see what you're okay. saying there, too. Right yeah. there with the lash. So as you can see, it helps when you evert the eyelid or, or pull the eyelid down. Say, so you can see there's uh, an erythematous pink area. Um, there's an elevated area that's kind of ulcerated in the center. And then loss of the eyelashes uh, in this area, which is a very focal loss. Wearing sunglasses is one way to protect your eyelids, but not the only way. But I think another issue, and this is my own theory, is that when we apply sunblock, you know, when we're applying it to our children, you know, what happens when we get close to the cheek, close to the eyelid? We stop ourselves or our children stop and move their head. So I think one issue is we're just not getting the sunblock too high, obviously, because we don't want it to get in the eyes. But Dr. Mack believes getting the sunscreen as close to your eyes as possible is imperative. And so is early detection. If you spot something unusual, have your eye doctor take a closer look. I'm Stacy Scheibel for 8 on your side.